Welcome to Externalities and Public Goods, day one. We're going to be sharing a little bit um, of behind the scenes info in these walkthrough videos, telling you what we were thinking um, for different activities. Um, so let's get started. For the unit plan, we have students start by thinking of what item may be overproduced. So they aren't necessarily going to see an externality here, but we want to get them thinking, why might something be overproduced, right? And then we have a great interactive activity for you guys um, to auction a noisy item. If you joined us at CEE, you would have gotten a cowbell, um, but you can auction off any noisy item. You might want to warn um, whoever's teaching class next door, but you need to let students know that they'll be able to use whatever item you auction off during class. So you can say you'll rent this item, you know, get it back at the end of class. Um, the idea here is to allow students to make a negative externality. And we're going to revisit that later on in the lesson. Um, so we introduce students to the terminology of externalities of that external cost or benefit. And specifically today, we'll be looking at negative externalities. We've given you some classic examples here for students to understand what a negative externality is, to look at um, a great, you know, comic of this, you know, child smoking a cigarette, right? Emphasizing that effect on a bystander in, in each one of these examples. And then we ask students to come up with examples um, for themselves. Now, at this point, hopefully, whoever purchased your noisy item in the auction should be making noise, right? So we should have at least one example currently occurring in class. Um, and we put this little suggestion here of think of times you've been bothered by somebody else's behavior, right? So think of something that somebody else has done that has an effect of you, right? Think of that um, yourself as the bystander. Um, and then we bring it back to the auction. So our goal here is to get students to see that this was an inefficient auction. So we ask them, how much would they pay not to listen to this item, right? Some people may be a lot uh, bothered um, compared to others. And then you're gonna add together that class total to get the external cost and compare that to the price of the winning bid to say, was, was the benefit greater than the cost, right? If it's not, if your cost is much higher than your benefit, your auction was inefficient, right? The market produced too much. It didn't consider all of the bystanders. Um, so we like this example of bringing in that cowbell or other noisy item. Then we ask students to really think about, okay, if we're going to look at how markets don't work, what is it that markets are doing? What happens at a regular market, right? Markets are coordinating buyers and sellers. They're giving us information. And they're maximizing consumer and producer surplus. Um, we have a great interactive practice on consumer and producer surplus if you want to review that before moving into the concept of externalities because it will reappear um, throughout this unit. Then we have a great new video of what are negative externalities. Um, our example uses uh, antibiotic resistance as the negative externality, right? So that cost on bystanders of resistance to antibiotics. For all of our videos, we have questions where you can pause at the given time and you can say, okay, are we understanding the key information, right? So who is a bystander? Are markets considering those bystanders, right? They're not. And what's gonna be our, our calculation to get the social cost curve, right? So we want private plus the external cost to get to that social cost curve. And then, Right? We want to produce not at market equilibrium, but at the efficient equilibrium where the social cost curve intersects demand. Right, So reinforcing some of the graphical analysis that's in the video um, on the slides, pausing to kind of explain those graphs. We've given students um, space on their worksheets to, to draw those graphs. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're really emphasizing that graphical analysis um, on this day. And then, right, where do we not want to produce? We don't want to produce where social cost is greater than the private value, right? So we don't want to produce where cost exceeds the benefit. And then we really want to make sure that students are able to 
not just identify, but explain what that dead weight loss area represents. Um, so we ask them uh, to write it down here. You can always incorporate a turn and talk, making sure students can explain it to one another, um, get feedback from one another on, is that is that quite right? Um, of course, we've got an answer for you so that you could always reference that, always put that up for the front of the class so that there's no confusion. And then we ask students to not look at their notes, right? And and kind of test their knowledge, right? So we wanna make sure they're pulling out the major, the major points here um, and can recall them and kind of build that memory, right? So the optimal quantity is not zero, right? So that's one of the things we do want them to take away is that when you have a market with an externality, it's not that there should be no production, it's just that the production should match the social cost, okay? So then we want students to think about, okay, how could we solve the problem of externalities? We're gonna talk about one solution today um, about Pagubian taxes, and then day three is going to bring in other solutions to externalities problems. So we'll get more information about Cosian bargaining, about cap and trade programs, about um, command and control solutions, all on day three. So today we only cover uh, Pagovian because it naturally flows after um, the graphical analysis on externalities, right? So we're bringing back in that example of the noisemaker, right? So what are some solutions here, right? So we're identifying some of those examples we're going to talk about um, in later days. Um, and you can always bring this up again on day three, right? Remember this auction that we did. Um, and then thinking about some other solutions to solving negative externalities more generally. Um, we've got a couple examples for you. You can always add your own. And then we transition to Pagu, right? So he says, set the tax equal to the marginal social cost. Um, and here is your graph of a Paguvian tax, right? So we've got our graph where the supply plus the tax is equal to that social cost. So there's no dead weight loss. And then to have students review and practice externalities, we have them grab a negative externality um, and answer some questions. Um, so that's a way that uh, students can get immediate elaborative feedback on whether they're understanding the material. And then their last activity is to go through these four situations. And then they're asked to identify, right, fill out this table. Is there a negative externality? What is it? Is there a dead weight loss, right? So the answer should be, Yes or no across the board, basically. But then they're asked, is a Pagovian tax a good idea? Um, and so this is going to foreshadow some of the problems that you might see with a Pagovian tax. It's not going to be able to solve all externalities problems. So we're going to be able to refer back to that on day three. And here's an answer key. Um, really, the most important thing here is that students are really considering, is there effect on a bystander? Not whether or not they agree um, with each of these you know, exact descriptions. And then we have an exit ticket for you, right? So thinking about what's a good you would like a Pagovian tax on, um, and then how much would you tax, right? So foreshadowing some of the problems with setting those optimal amounts. Be sure to check out our days two through five walkthrough videos. Um, and if you haven't requested it yet, be sure to check out our externalities and public goods unit plan.